Welcome back to another edition of Career Compass, a conclave towards choosing careers. This month, our Career Compass focus took to the skies. Yes, you guessed it right. Pilot as a career. Yes, yet another lucrative and adventurous profession of all times. We have in our midst Captain Sebastian Joseph to take us to the skies. Wishing you a great day with us, sir. Hello, viewers. I'm Captain K. Sebastian Joseph. I retired from Air India as an examiner on the Airbus and a Deputy General Manager Operations. He retired in July 2020. I'm here to give you a view of uh, how to become an aviator right from the beginning, from your school days, right up to a senior captain. An airline career starts with first being a trainee pilot in any of the airlines, getting qualified on their basic aircrafts, either it could be an ATR Q400 or a 737 or an Airbus 320. And once you finish the qualification, you become a first officer. You fly as a first officer for quite some time, about a year and a half until you attain about 1,500 hours and then you qualify for your command. That is, you get your airline transport pilot's license, passing various exams and also checks on the simulator and aircraft. Once this phase is over, you're qualified as a commander and later, according to your company requirements, they can upgrade you as a check pilot or what is called an LTC now, line training captain. Line training captains basically check other pilots on the aircraft and also do their training. Part of the training is done on the aircraft. Then you come and get yourself upgraded to become an instructor where you will do a lot of work, a lot of teaching, especially in the simulator as well as aircraft training. And then you will be qualified later with the company requirements again as an examiner and the examiner status is given by the DGCA. First of all, when you're a student in school, a lot of students uh, dream of flying an aircraft so that you start working from your 10th standard. You take your plus two with maths and physics and once you clear your plus two exams, you can plan your career as an aviator. Uh, the initial part of it is to get yourself medically qualified and uh, these approved medical centers, I am Institute of Aerospace Medicine, Bangalore and CME in Delhi. We also have Apollo in Chennai, which conduct these exams, uh, checks for your initial medical exams. There are other medical centers available all over India, which is available on the DGCA website. There are a lot of flying training institutes in India and abroad also. These flying institutes have to be approved by the DGCA to conduct flying training for uh, students who are aspiring to become pilots. They start with, uh, you have government sponsored flying clubs and there are also private flying uh, schools all over India. Approved training institutes, the list of the training institutes are also available in the DGCA websites. Apart from this, there are also airlines which offer you a cadet course uh, like Indigo and SpiceJet. There's also a government uh, training center, IGRUA. Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Uran Academy in uh, Rai Barli, where they give you training to become, to attain your CPL. International airlines also have come up with the cadet training program like Qatar Airways and Air Arabia. This is the DGCA website where you get all the information regarding your licenses, approvals, your training, what type of training should be conducted, the ground classes and your uh, practical training on the aircraft. All this has been elaborated and given in the CAR, what we call a Civil Aviation Regulation, which is uh, given out by the DGCA. The various ground subjects and exams we have to pass to attain your commercial pilot licenses are air regulations, rules of the air followed all over the world, 
or guided by the guided by ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization for Safe and Efficient Flying, and in India ruled by the DGCA. The DGCA gives out CARS. CARS is civil aviation regulations which are strictly to be followed. Other subject is navigation. It's a method of flying an aircraft from A to B using all available navigation aids, either ground-based aids or sky-based aids or inertial reference systems embedded in the aircraft. We also have a subject of radio aids, which is a method of uh, communication and navigation between aircrafts and ground air and air to ground. As we continue with the list of uh, ground studies, we have radio telephony is a method of method and phrases used in aviation from between aircrafts and ground, ground to aircraft and between the aircrafts. This license is issued by the Ministry of Communication and later an FRTO is issued by the DGCA to certify the pilot on use of the radio equipment in the aircraft. We have also have aviation meteorology. This is a subject of global meteorology and Indian climatology to make a pilot aware of the weather conditions wherever he is flying. We also have a test for English language proficiency. It is called ELP and it is conducted by DGC approved organizations because it has found that sometimes there was lack of communication between the ground control and the aircraft and every pilot had to achieve a sense of uh, level of uh, English language. Apart from that, we have a BSC aviation which can be done simultaneously with your flying training, which includes a lot of the subjects we have covered so far and it can be done via distance learning methods. As I told you about the flying requirements to achieve your basic uh, commercial pilot license is 200 hours, which will include a minimum of 100 hours as PIC, pilot in command, which has to have 50 hours of cross country and 40 hours of instrument flying. That is flying, looking at your aircraft instruments alone, either on a single engine aircraft or a multi-engine aircraft. Now we come to the most important cost factors, which is a little expensive when you come to look at it. A basic CPL would cost you approximately about 20 lakhs. And if you want to take a multi-engine rating, we add another about 9 lakhs. And what the airlines require these days are type-rated pilots because they feel that they don't want to take up the training cost of uh, the pilot. So they ask the pilots to pay for the training course. An ATR or a Q400 will approximately cost you about 18 lakhs for the full course. And a Boeing 737 or an Airbus 320 would cost you approximately 20 lakhs. Cadet training programs offered by different airlines will, is also available, which would cost approximately 1 crore. There are also scholarships awarded by the Government of India to empower underprivileged students and to take up flying. Various banks also support the flying career by giving educational loans for the about training. Entry into an airline is totally dependent on the individual airline. The aircraft's uh, type rating on any of the basic aircrafts, like I told you, ATR 737, 320 or Q400, then they will have a written exam which will include an aptitude test, technical knowledge of aviation and knowledge of general aviation. Group discussion to assess leadership qualities and team management or what we call CRM, company resource management, how you would be able to perform in different situations and take a leadership role and take the whole team with you on task. The last and final will be an interview by a panel which could include a psychologist to evaluate you. Once you're selected into an airline, the initial is a training first officer, where you will go undergo classes, simulator training, checks, aircraft training, 
or SLF, what we call it now, supervised land flying, and ultimately a release stick. Once you're released as a first officer, you will approximately be getting 60,000 to what, 150,000, depending again on the type of aircraft and the airline you're flying in. Once you achieve about 1500 hours of flying experience and passing again some written exams, advanced air navigation, radio aids and aviation meteorology and viva conducted by the DC, you will be qualified to get your airline transport pilot's license, which is a basic requirement for flying an aircraft in command. Now, once we are flying in command, again, airline requirements come into the fore. You can be asked to take up responsibilities as a check pilot, depending on the recommendations and your performance as a captain. After a certain time, the airline can ask you to become an instructor where you will be imparting simulator training and aircraft training for all pilots of the airline and doing their checks. Ultimately, we come to an examiner. An examiner is recommended by the airline to the DGCA. DGCA will look at the qualifications, conduct a viva or interview, and evaluate the person before making him a designated examiner. Apart from all these exams that we have passed, we also have a periodical checks for every pilot from a first officer to a very senior captain will have to undergo these refreshers every year, which includes technical upgraded knowledge, crew resource management, AFSEC, aviation security, DGR, dangerous goods regulations, and SCP, safety emergency procedures. We also have a class one medical conducted by the DGC approved medical board and six monthly simulator training and checks. Now we look at the hierarchy of uh, aviation globally. We have ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, headquartered in Montreal, issues guidelines to all regulators all over the world on safety procedures and rules of flying to be adopted in aviation. Then you have the Regulatory Authority of India, which is the DGCA, to ensure compliance of its rules as set up in the CAR, Civil Aviation Regulation. It covers every aspect of uh, aviation from helicopters right up to the biggest aircrafts we have in India. The alumni of uh, Don Bosco Egmore is here. We have Captain Sandeep Panni, Principal Emirates Pilot Training Academy, Dubai. Captain Sunil Nair, Instructor Airbus uh, in Air India. Captain Sudhir Nair, Commander in Go Air, Captain Vernon Saldana, Examiner, Indigo Airbus, and Captain Karan Sebastian, First Officer, Indigo Airbus. We do hope to find this list ever growing and keep it up. Welcome back, dear sir. We really appreciate the knowledge that you have shared and the information that you have given for a course of students. Really, it was exhilarating. Okay, just a few questions before we wind up, sir. What personality traits are you looking for from the students in order to be a very successful pilot? We're looking at somebody who can be a good leader, a basic a good team leader. So you should be able to lead and able to take the whole uh, team along with him in a very clear and uh, clear mind. Wonderful. So I think schools and management should work on honing up the leadership skills of students. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now moving on to another question is uh, a very simple one. Uh, you've been uh, maneuvering uh, uh, flights at uh, dizzy heights. Uh, how do you find it when you are on road? Good Which rest. is more stressful? <laughs> I think the roads are more stressful. <laughs> That's why I stopped okay. driving nowadays. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather be Great. flying. <laughs> Great. And so from the student's perspective, um, it's very obvious that m mathematical skills and uh, knowledge of physics play a pivotal role. Um, I feel that students need to know the creditworthiness of what they're studying. So uh, if you could just highlight on 
certain areas of mathematics and physics, whatever they are studied in 11th and 12th and 10th, how exactly it's being applied so that students will, will understand, okay, fine, it is application oriented and they will uh, do it with more interest. Good. Actually, what happens is a lot of our uh, flying is based on physics. Your movement through the air, your uh, thrust, your lift, your drag is all is part of physics. And you look at maths, you have all the calculations you do about your flight speeds, your landing speeds, your takeoff speeds. It is all calculated with maths. Uh, last but not the least, sir. How is it an adventure every time um, when you step into the cockpit? The excitement of uh, the firing of engines, um, going full thrust, you're maneuvering through uh, landscapes and uh, mountains and you're seeing the beautiful sunrise, sunsets, and so on and so forth. How is it an adventure every time? Uh, looking at uh, something new to do every, every flight. You're doing something new, you're landing in some other new place, you're landing in uh, some what you call uh, difficult uh, airfields, you're going through different weather conditions, sometimes it is raining, sometimes it is foggy, and uh, so all these things really... The stormy skies, light Stormy and skies, and, uh, and even like in uh, December, January weather in Delhi, it's all foggy, you can't see anything, you're doing a blind landing. So until you until the wheels touch the ground, you don't even know whether you're landed. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your valuable time that you've given for us. Mm -hmm. And we are also able to see the positivity that is coming out of you. And not only that, uh, whatever you mention, it is for the benefit of posterity. I think the future generations are in the right hands. Um, the enthusiasm and the charisma with which you're carrying yourself and the willingness to adapt and change to the situations at every stage of your life I think these are all lessons that we need to take. Uh, we should not be stuck in one particular situation and then, you know, be stagnating on that. I think we are uh, learning from you that at every stage of your career, you have a refresher course almost every year. Yes. I think uh, that shows that there is a willingness to learn and adapt to situations. And this is something which is very vital for every one of us. Thank you very much, sir, for the valuable time that you've given for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sincere word of thanks to all our subscribers and letters of support and call letters towards Career Compass.